I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Oh, but you guys had questions. Lots of questions. So I'm going to try to answer them. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and several months ago I did a very impromptu video where I upgraded my wife's office setup from an old Dell Windows laptop to a dual screen 2020 M1 Mac mini setup. And surprisingly to me, it's my most popular video racking up over 400,000 views. Even now, eight months later, it still gets one to 2,000 daily views and still plenty of engagement. Mostly I get questions. You see, in the video I just went over all the components I selected and why I selected them, how I set it up with cable management in mind, keeping it clean and uncluttered. However, what I glossed over was exactly how I connected it all. Primarily how I got two displays working on the Mac Mini, as well as an external SATA USB-C storage hub. So I'm gonna take just a few minutes to show you exactly how I did it, as well as a few alternate ways of setting it up and explain a little more about the M1 Mac Mini in terms of its display capabilities. Finally, I'll give you a brief update on what's worked with the setup and what hasn't and what's changed. So first thing first, how are two displays connected to the M1 Mac Mini? It's, it's very simple. The primary display is connected by an HDMI cable from the Mac Mini HDMI output to the display HDMI input. The second display is connected by this USB-C to HDMI cable from one of the Mac Mini's USB-C ports, leaving the second port open for the external storage hub. Now, I can't vouch for every USB-C to HDMI cable out there. I know some don't work well. For example, this J5 Create cable I picked up from Best Buy isn't great. The HDMI side where the electronics reside that converts the video signal, it gets hot and overheats at least when driving a 4K display. This cable, however, works just fine and I haven't had any issues with it. The two displays operate identically. There's no lag or performance decrease between the two, either on my wife's 1080p displays or on my dual 4K displays. I should also point out both the USB-C ports on the Mac Mini are Thunderbolt 3. This cable is not Thunderbolt. It just works on the USB-C display port alt mode. And although there are two Thunderbolt 3 ports and the Thunderbolt standard says each one should support up to one 4K display, they don't really. The M1 chip can only support two displays max. So either one HDMI and one Thunderbolt USB-C or both the Thunderbolt. Okay, HDMI to HDMI and USB-C to HDMI is how I connected the two displays to the Mac Mini, but what are the alternatives? Well, first let me tell you what the only official Apple certified way is to connect the second display, and that's the use of this $69 USB-C digital multi-port adapter. So this will give you not just HDMI output, but also a USB-C and a USB-A, and it's the only method Apple will support. So if you have a problem with something like this, and you call Apple support, they'll just tell you it's not an officially supported product, so go buy this, but $69, $17. Now, if you want even more expandability, you can get something like this 10-in-1 USB-C hub. So not only does this have an HDMI output, it also has an, an internal M.2 NVMe storage bay, Ethernet, more USB-C and USB-A ports, and an SD and mini SD reader. So with this, you can consolidate this and this into a single connection on the Mac Mini. Also, if you need to connect a display port on your monitor, I've tested with an HDMI to display port cable like this, and it works fine. Also, if you want a refresh rate above 60 hertz, you'll need to ensure that your HDMI and USB-C to HDMI cables are HDMI 2.0 cables, or USB-C to display port 1.4 cables also works. Both these monitors are only 75 hertz, but the Mac mini does support up to 144 hertz. Finally, several people have asked why I went with 
two displays instead of a single ultra wide monitor and simply at least at the time i set this up the m1 mac didn't support ultra wide resolutions it would basically just stretch a 1920 by 1080 image horizontally to fit this display it required a paid third party app to get it to work anyway i'm not sure if that's fixed by now but this is what she wanted so happy wife you know other problems I saw was the Mac mini always tries to default the primary display to the HDMI output regardless of how it's set. And if just using the USB-C to HDMI cable for display output, along with other peripheral problems, sleep causes, the display wouldn't be recognized on wake. I would have to actually unplug and replug the cable to get the display working again. So. I think that covers the display. Some of the other questions or concerns people had about the setup was the fact that I initially had the USB dock under the Mac mini, which because the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna is on the bottom of the Mac, the metal hub could be blocking the signal and there were Bluetooth connectivity issues. So I moved the hub on top of the Mac and well, nothing changed. The Bluetooth speaker that's right here still won't stay connected. I actually have it wired in now. Putting an antenna on the bottom of a chunk of aluminum, not the best idea. Making the Apple logo on the top of plastic cutout and putting it in there would probably go a long way to solving the problem. The only other change I made to the setup is I swapped out the third party keyboard and mouse with an Apple Magic keyboard and mouse from my M1 iMac. And just FYI, the fingerprint reader works perfect with the Mac mini. However, there does seem to be some connectivity issues with the keyboard. My wife has complained about it disconnecting and lagging. Other than that, despite her initial reaction, my wife adapted very quickly to her new setup and the Mac environment and has transitioned a lot of her productivity and accounting work to Apple applications. She even just switched from an Android to a new iPhone, so I think she's fully converted at this point. Anyway, links to all the cables, hubs, and adapters I talked about are linked down in the description, as well as the initial setup video and my daughter's M1 iMac multi-display setup video. If you want to see how I got a third display connected to the M1 iMac, be sure to check that out. Before I sign off, I need to fix one last thing I got some flack about in the earlier video, but while I'm doing that, be sure to like and subscribe and all that, and enjoy this outro.